<laughs> hey guys, Danny here. If you haven't watched Tony's latest video on our mushroom grower, go check it out. He provided a bunch of really great feedback, in-depth uh, feature reviews, stuff we could add, stuff we could take out. Um, really awesome video in general, and we got a ton of comments and engagement on that. Some of you have actually decided to help us prototype a humidification system, which is awesome. We're gonna go talk to him now, so let's go check it out. Hi, my name is uh, Howard. Uh, I am a uh, hobbyist mushroom grower from Trondheim in Norway. So I started out with this prototype. So you have um, uh, the room for the fan right here, and then you have the humidification or the wick filter humidification part that goes in here. Uh, and then I added the, uh, this part that just takes a regular uh, like half liter uh, bottle. But right now, if I just put the bottle in this hole and turn it upside down, I get a, a constant water level. And then I also made this one, which has uh, the same input for the water bottle right here. And then it has a sideways, sideways filter. This was both to be able to keep this uh, thing, um, keep the filter cleaner without having a bunch of spores uh, dripping down from the, um, from the mushrooms. And also to have kind of like a, a humidifier that also can just blow fresh air throughout, uh, throughout where the mushrooms are growing. So Howard gave us a lot of really good information on how to improve the humidity system in our mushroom grower. My man Steven here has been doing a lot of really cool work on it, and he's going to talk us through some of the specifics about it. What's up, guys? My name's Steven, and I'm an engineer here at First Build, and I've been helping out on the mushroom maker. So jumping into some of these comments, Seth mentioned if they can make the unit wider, taller, with maybe a bigger water reservoir, that would be great. Well, guess what, Seth? That's what we did. <laughs> Another comment from Uncle Tater said, I was thinking of having an external water reservoir that would feed the basin and be maybe clear with a half to one gallon capacity. Well, guess what, Uncle Tater? We got you covered there too. We used our Opal side tank, which has about a half gallon capacity, and we made a custom tray that it falls into with our humidification media under that. Uh, and we have a fan on top of that, pulling air up through that humidification filter that does two things for us. Uh, it humidifies the chamber, but also, if spores drop from the mushrooms, they'll get pulled into that reusable humidification filter rather than accumulating on the fan. Joel Howe on YouTube says, an external water reservoir that feeds the tray inside would be nice. We got you covered there. He also said that you mentioned climate control and it feels like it would be fairly simple to add a heat mat below the water tray to at least enable half of the temperature control equation. He's absolutely right. Heating and cooling are both doable. Cooling is a little bit more challenging than heating is, but heating is relatively straightforward. So those of you in colder climates, we could definitely throw in a heat mat uh, and make it warmer for those warmer temperature mushrooms. Also, Zlayton said, if they could make the fan easier to remove and clean, uh, that would be helpful. Well, Zlayton, that's essentially what we did, moving the fan over to the side and having the air come up through the humidification filter and then out the top of the fan. And another thing there is, if you remember Tony's video, the original prototype had a huge stainless tray on the bottom, and that was difficult to clean and it can be a little bit difficult to use. So by moving the humidification system to this side, we actually got rid of all of those components. So now you have all this nice, easy to clean area on the bottom to place your fruiting blocks. Cheryl in the raw said, if the chamber could be roomier or even a double decker, that could accommodate two to four fruiting blocks at the same time, then she would definitely buy it. Well, when we made the unit wider and a little taller, I think it could accumulate two to four fruiting blocks. What do you think, Danny? Easy, yeah, no problem. Buy it. Sebastian Kubiyu says on YouTube, regarding the temperature control, I'd suggest to use some Peltier modules since a temperature and humidity sensor can be placed without much additional hardware modification, adding to the fact that there's already a ventilation system and can be used for both fresh air and heat radiation. Uh, he's absolutely right. You can use Peltier modules to both heat and cool. So we can do that, but you definitely have to get rid of the acrylic sidewalls, insulate this, and you really have to amp up how much power you're using, um, which is doable, but it would add a lot of cost um, and it would consume a lot of energy. Um, so we're a little hesitant to jump into that just yet. Richard Patterson said on YouTube, where do I send my money? It needs to be bigger with a water reservoir, preset buttons for most common mushrooms. So we're two out of three. It's bigger. It has a water reservoir. I guess the buttons are technically on your phone. Mm -hmm. So we have all three. Mm -hmm. We're done. He has to buy it too. 
Thanks for all the awesome feedback on YouTube. We've been enjoying reading your comments and taking those comments uh, into practicality, making this new unit here at First Build. So our next steps are gonna be making sure the humidity and airflow control work as we expect for having such a bigger unit. Uh, so make sure to like and subscribe and check out our next video. Thanks for watching.